make a recording or configure the settings in the menus, it might be good to ask yourself the following basic questions. What type of audio, video, and timecode connections have I made to KeyPro? Do I want to record the same format the camera is providing? Or do I want to perform a conversion, up, down, or cross, using KeyPro? Finally, do I want to record Apple ProRes 422 or Apple ProRes 422 HQ? Navigating the menu selections of KeyPro is very straightforward. Selections are made in two menus, Config and Media. To access the configuration settings, push the Config button to enter that menu. Use the Select Up and Down buttons to navigate through the menu parameters and the Adjust buttons to make changes to the various parameters. Record type. Normally, you will be leaving this in the default selection of normal. Only if you are sending a progressively segmented frame format, like 2398 PSF, will you need to change the menu selection to PSF. Inconvert. If you do not want to change the format of the video that is coming from the camera or video source, simply leave Inconvert set to none. If you want to convert the incoming video signal, you can select this as SD, HD720, or HD1080. The conversion selected will produce the desired conversion and subsequent recording. Example, if you're using a 1080i camera, but you want to record 720p, then you would set the in convert to HD720. Out convert. Sometimes you will want to output a format other than what has been recorded to file, or you want to monitor in a format other than what is being input. OutConvert can be set to SD, HD720, or HD1080. SDI Out. This selection allows you to decide whether you output the recorded format or the conversion format that has been selected in the OutConvert menu parameter. Component Out. This selection allows you to choose whether you output the recorded format or the conversion that you've selected in the OutConvert menu parameter. HDMI Out. This selection allows you to choose whether you output the recorded format or the conversion that could have been selected in the OutConvert menu parameter. Video Input. This parameter selects a video input source from the video input connections available. This is the video signal that will be recorded and or passed through. The first selection you'll note is SDI. If I change the next selection to HDMI, you'll notice that a warning comes on the display. This is because right now, SDI audio is also selected. You can't have HDMI audio and SDI video or SDI video and HDMI audio. Embedded audio must match the source. You can have component video and analog audio, and analog audio in any of the digital selections. Notice the alarm status has cleared because we're actually back to SDI audio and video. So let's look at audio input next. Notice that it's SDI, and we have SDI video. But if we select HDMI, the alarm will actually appear again. So again, embedded SDI, audio will match SDI video, RCA analog audio can be used with SDI video, or XLR balanced analog audio can be used with SDI video, but not HDMI audio. That can only be used with HDMI video. Component in level. This parameter selects the input level for signals applied at the component video input connectors. For HD sources, the selection will be SMPTE N10. But if you're getting signal from something like a Betacam SP VTR, then select Betacam. Component Out Level. This parameter selects the output level for signals applied at the component video output connectors. If you are monitoring in HD, you'll want to leave the setting at SMPD N10. But if you are monitoring in SD, you will likely want to set this to Betacam. In rare cases, you may be connecting the KeyPro output to an RGB-only device, like a projector, and therefore you may want to set this to RGB. NTSC Config. 
In the US market, NTSC would be the correct setting. But if you're in Japan, they have a slightly different video level. So therefore, you would select NTSC Japan. Analog audio. This parameter configures the analog audio signal levels for input and output. Professional audio equipment has much higher levels than consumer equipment. A zero VU reading corresponds to plus four dBU. Connecting a professional plus four dBU device to a consumer audio input, negative 10 dB, may cause overloading, whereas the output of a consumer device probably does not have sufficient power to drive a professional audio input. Select the audio setting that is appropriate for the type of equipment that you are using. Up conversion. This parameter selects the type of up conversion from SD performed, if set to do so with parameters 1.6 through 1.8. Zoom wide is the default setting. It uses a combination of zoom and stretch to make the image fit to the 16 by 9 screen. Anamorphic is a full screen display option. Zoom 14 by 9 slightly zooms the image to fill a 14 by 9 area with black sidebars. Zoom letterbox zooms the image to fill the full screen but can introduce a small aspect ratio change. Finally, pillar box does not change the image at all and produces black sidebars surrounding the image. Down conversion. This parameter selects the type of down conversion from HD Perform if set up to do so with parameters 1.6 through 1.8. The default selection is letterbox. The image is reduced with black, top and bottom bars added to the image, but with the aspect ratio preserved. Crop produces an image that is cropped to fit the new screen size. Anamorphic HD is converted to full screen SD with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, producing an anamorphic result. Genlock. This parameter selects the source of reference video used to genlock to, either automatically or explicitly. Keep in mind that during recordings, KeyPro always locks to the selected video input and that the genlock setting is with regards to playback. Free Run allows the KeyPro to sync to its own time base and is not locked to an external source. Input uses the currently selected input as the genlock source. Component Y uses that particular connector as the genlock source. Timecode in. This parameter selects the source of timecode from those available. In many cases, you will want to replicate the timecode value coming from the camera. If you do not want to do this, you can configure the TC value or use the KeyPro's internal clock to produce a timecode value for your recordings. SDIRP188 means that it's actually taking the timecode information, if available, from the embedded SDI signal. LTC is a dedicated connector on KeyPro, so you can send timecode from sources that have LTC outputs to KeyPro and record that to your QuickTime files. And time of day is using the internal clock of KeyPro. TC value. This parameter selects an hour for timecode to start. Each subsequent recording after the first time you set this value will increment until you reset the value. If you start with a recording at hour one and end at hour one, 14 seconds, 11 frames, then your next recording begins at hour one, 14 seconds, 12 frames. Here we're just showing that you can adjust from various hour values to start your recording. TC type. This parameter selects drop frame or non-drop frame timecode for your clips. Since the goal of this video is to give you a basic understanding of configuring KeyPro, we will skip over the configuration of the Ethernet and wireless parameters. For more detailed information on how to configure these parameters, consult the KeyPro manual. Date set. This parameter manually sets the calendar date of the internal KeyPro clock. The value is defined as year, month, and day. Using the adjust buttons, enter a calendar date for KeyPro. When finished, the final press of the select button will flash the entire value, and the next hit of the select button will actually confirm it and move you to the next menu parameter. 
time set. This parameter manually sets the calendar date of the internal key pro clock. Please note that this time is based on GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. So if you are in another time zone, you will need to remember to set this accordingly and not necessarily to the time you see on your watch. Also note that the clock is in 24-hour mode, not 12-hour display mode. Just like with the date set, the last selection of select will flash the display and then the next press will take you to the next menu and confirm the operation. Screensaver. When set to AJA logo, a rolling AJA logo screensaver will appear on the alphanumeric display after three minutes of inactivity. Inactivity is defined as no button presses on the front of the panel. When the screensaver is on, the status button or stop button will exit the screensaver. Alternately, you can elect to turn off the screensaver. Display intensity. This parameter determines the brightness of the alphanumeric display and front panel backlit buttons. You may want to adjust this according to the environment that you're working in. Fan speed. This parameter determines the speed of KeyPro's internal cooling fan. In some environments where audio recording is occurring close to the KeyPro unit, it may be desirable to set the fan speed to quiet record for optimum quiet operation. After you've made the settings that you desire in the config parameters, you can exit the menu by either hitting the config button again or hitting the stop button. Now that you've made all the selections related to the audio, video, timecode, and the basic operation of the device, you can use the media menu to determine what compression you will record and how your clips will be named.